Welcome to my presentation. I'm Hak from Akasa, formerly known as Alpha Health. Akasa is a startup to provide hospitals a flexible AI-based solution that automates complex operational workflows such as revenue cycle management. In my talk today, what I like to do is to explore the potential role of machine learning to address Baumol's cost disease in healthcare. And in particular, we'll present recent progresses of harnessing state-of-the-art deep learning techniques to automate how medical bills are processed and paid in healthcare revenue cycle management settings. So I want to start by zooming out and talking about Baumol's cost thesis. Baumol's cost thesis is the rise of salaries in jobs that have experienced a low increase of labor productivity in response to rising wages in other jobs that have experienced higher labor productivity growth. The Baumol effect has been a significant driver of costs in some sectors for decades, with no clear path to reversing this effect. And those are education and healthcare that rely heavily on non-routine human interaction or activities, so they have had less growth in productivity over time. In our healthcare systems, large parts of healthcare takes human step the same amount of time as it did a while ago, as many types of activities has yet been engineered to perform more quickly, accurately, or efficiently in the same way that a machine had. And even before the COVID-19 pandemic, we have heard several staggering complaints about the US health system. 66.5% of personal bankruptcies are tied to medical bills. One of the biggest reasons for personal bankruptcies in the US is medical debt. This is frustrating. Studies have reported that the United States spends more on healthcare than any other country. Still, a quarter of annual spending is wasted. And the waste is associated highly with administrative expenses in which claim deniers are identified as top of mind causes. And this is all pre-pandemic. If we consider situations such as current COVID pandemic where hospitals are presented with significant new challenges, well, everything just gets worse. Now, if we take a step back, and think about other industries, such as self-driving. AI has long been recognized for its potential to provide consistent assistance to humans. And this naturally leads to the question of, can AI also provide useful automation to hospital staff? And what, preci what, what precisely should the nature of this automation be? In autonomous driving, the degree of AI automation to humans has been categorized as different autonomy levels, ranging from level zero, where humans have complete control, to level five, where the AI has full control. I do argue that for most healthcare systems operating within an existing electronic health record and revenue cycle infrastructure, at least in the realistic future, what we'd like is neither full human control nor full AI control. But unified automation falls somewhere along with levels one to four on the spectrum. So we think this expert in the loop where AI and human staff interface should look like unified automation. With this unified automation, we first observe current human steps workflows, then AI quickly launch the observed workflow, and human steps ensure exceptions and edge cases while the AI system learns in real time from the action from the actions they take. So we've talked a bit about unified automation. 
And with this in mind, in the rest of this talk, I'd like to talk in a particular sampling of two major application areas. I will start first with a patient's hospital visit, and I'd like to focus on particular in inpatient visits. The inpatient unit patient chart is most challenging and complex because it includes several medical research and notes from various providers seen during patients' hospital stays. As an example, consider Steve, a patient with diabetes. Steve is admitted by his primary doctor to have him checked and receive necessary treatments throughout hospital stays. Finally, he goes to his local pharmacy to refill his insulin prescri prescription after discharge. All healthcare providers want to be paid for their services. So all interactions in the chart need to be converted to data following consistent format and using a standard set of pre-established code that describes specific diagnosis and procedures. This is where medical coding plays a role. For traditional medical coding, typically the coding team downloads the patient charts and allocate them to the pre-coders and coders. The pre-coders first capture key information such as the physician's name and place of services, etc. Then certified coders select appropriate diagnosis and procedure code to reflect what was documented. Later, the coding team evaluates the assigned code to cross-check. For example, the diagnosis is compatible with the assigned procedure code. And then last, the coded charts are ready to be sent to the billing department. So how will machine learning be able to change this long medical coding process of today? Machine learning, ML-based medical coding can save significant time and effort by human coders today by predicting the appropriate code more accurately and rapidly. Using this new ML capability, the overall medical coding process can be improved beyond what's currently possible with human efforts in reducing coding errors and lag days, for example. We've been excited by these possibilities and we've been working towards developing deep learning based algorithms. So what exactly is the medical coding problem? Well, clinical notes contain a lot of information about what precisely happened during the patient's entire stay. So here you can see an example of a discharge summary that is typically long, loosely structured, consists of medical domain language, and sometimes riddled with spelling errors. The medical coding problem is provided with the clinical notes to connect the notes with multiple code subset from nearly, say, 70,000 total codes in the ICD-10 coding system, for example. So it's a highly multi-label classification problem, and more codes will add more complexity to the problem. And so naturally follows that Developing algorithms that automatically read, interpret, and assign code individually could be a very high value for coders. Then, to approach this medical coding problem, we have developed a deep learning based model. First, involved automated pre processing and tokenization of the clinical documents to be able to obtain standardized input. We then embed a group of nearby tokens like n-grams using embedding and convolutional neural network 
CNN layers since the number of tokens is large. Now, once we have the convoluted embeddings of the input text, in addition to this, we produce the reader's output on top of the convoluted embedding using the stacks of self-attention layer to simultaneously capture both local and long range dependencies in the text effectively and efficiently. On top of the reader, now we need to compute the code title embedding that we can see here on the right. One idea behind this design is to produce close queries for many similar codes in description. Instead, we can attempt to learn this query from scratch, but this is inefficient since large portions of code are much less common than others, leading to long tail distribution. So to deal with this challenge, we use code title embedding output as a query for the subsequent code level attention. This, in fact, enables us to deal with the long tail codes effectively. And then through another attention module on top on the left, we can focus on the important parts that matter for each code separately and assign each code individually. Now we have the read, attend, and code algorithm that can predict appropriate codes from clinical notes. So after developing this new attention-based read, attend, and code algorithms, we benchmark our model with a publicly available MIMIC data set. We are particularly excited that the model has shown overall strong coding performance across various metrics and established new state-of-the-art result. And we found that we could achieve even better performance than the human level baseline measured internally. Given these promising results, we started exploring the deployment of the algorithm within commercial EHR systems as a next step. Well, I think this demonstrates the first potential of machine learning in addressing biomole's cost digits in healthcare. Okay, now, machine learning-based medical coding is great. And with these automatically coded charts, the next I'd like to move to medical claims, which to be used to submit to an insurance company or payer to receive agreed upon reimbursement for services provided. In a layman's perspective, out of all the medical claims submit to the payer, AKA insurance company, almost 10% of clients claims are denied, but 65% of these are never reworked. Unpaid claims require extended iterations, which often fall back, fall back to the patient eventually. One thing to be aware of is that all the claims are prepared and submitted by humans for the last 20 years and walk through this very inefficient life cycle. So machine learning based pair response prediction with high accurate predictions is anticipated to improve healthcare steps, performance, productivity, and drive better patient financial experience and satisfaction in the revenue cycle. By developing deep learning based algorithm to assist healthcare providers in predicting which claims are to be denied, even before the claim has been submitted, we could imagine how much machine learning will be beneficial if we can increase the payment on its first submission. That said, how does a raw medical claim look like? 
Claims can be sent electronically or on paper, but they must include required data and formatting, both the form itself and the data within the fields. So here, I've shown an example claim form. And the first section at the top shows the patient's demographic details. The second section at the bottom primarily shows patient received diagnosis and performed procedures information. Specif specifically, the role claims can be grouped mainly into three contextual categories, the patient's demographic data, received diagnosis, and performed procedures. Moreover, each category is composed of a huge list of token variables, as I show here. One can piece all three contexts together to convert a single claim to a concatenated claim vector. Typically, this, this vector can have a length in the thousands and be extremely sparse. Unlike natural language sentences, this claim vector is an unordered collection of medical events and aggregations of diverse code types. So it is not straightforward to apply off-the-shelf NLP models. Instead, we developed a, a multi-task deep learning model, DeepClaim. On the bottom, there's a claim vector. Next, our model is composed of a shared claims embedding network that compresses the sparse claim vector into useful lower level claim embedding. Then, multi-task learning network and the task-specific heads that rose on top of the claim embedding network to learn the better claim embedding using closely related prediction task. And finally, the top of the output shown here is what the deep claim targets to predict. This includes claim denier prob probability, claim and service level reason code, and payer response date. And so in the end, we are able to train a model that could perform simultaneous predictions of denial likelihood and reasons. Now, to obtain a claim embedding first, you can see here which components pertain to the claims embedding network that takes a claim as input. The first layer is a hierarchy of gated layers over each sub vector. This is a super important step to handle the sparsity of each sub vector. The next layer is the bilinear pooling and batch normalization layer. This will capture interdependencies among three input contexts. Finally, there are addition and value steps to summarize and join all the three contexts as claim embedding H to serve as the input for the multitask learning network. In the following network, multitask learning transforms the claim embedding H process it through the individual towers and make each final prediction. And now, with this deep claim model based on gating mechanisms and bilinear pooling, we are able to find 20-20% more deniers far beyond what best, what best ML baselines are capable of. As we work toward building live, interactive, and predictive claims analysis, deep claim algorithm is critical in providing a context where such, an, such as allowing that the claim might be at risk for denial. And so I hope this illustrates the second potentials of machine learning in addressing Baumol's cost disease in healthcare.
And last but not least, I do like to take a moment to highlight one other key component that to consider as we develop these new machine learning based automation technologies. Machine learning is a wonderful automator. Once it has learned how to perform a task, it can perform the same task repeatedly without fail and without getting bored. On the other hand, humans often don't enjoy as much performing the road tasks that are most easily automated. In fact, poorly designed automation can make operators less creative, less able to solve problems. It can also drain domain expertise from an organization. So it's important to think about these ironies of automation from the beginning to better guide this technology development. Finally, I want to conclude by saying that this is not the end of the story as we look into the future. And we need more innovation to actually cure the bowel's cost disease in healthcare. And I'd like to invite more people to join this incredible journey, journey and we're hiring. With that, thank you for your attention.